In a stern statement, Australian Federal Police Commissioner Rhys Kershaw delivered a warning without naming names. Many believe his words were directed at a certain individual, Mark Buttle. And I have a message for the criminals targeting Australia and Australia's interests. The AFP will be relentless. We will outsmart you. We will be a step ahead. A Operation Ironside is just the beginning. And the AFP is living up to our maxim of keeping Australians safe. Mark Buttle was no ordinary man. He was the leader of the Comancheros biker gang, running one of the largest drug operations in the whole of Australia. With his dirty money, he lived a life filled with extravagant luxuries and lavish comforts. However, a dark shadow from 2010 resurfaced to haunt him, sending him into a life of constant avoidance and hiding. But surprisingly, it wasn't the crimes from his past that ultimately led to his downfall. A small incident with British tourists triggered a series of events that led to Buttle's downfall. A harmless gesture, tapping his wife's behind, caused Buttle to react violently, bringing attention to his criminal activities. This marked the beginning of the end for Mark Buttle, the once powerful leader brought down by a seemingly minor moment of anger and aggression. Mark Buttle's story began in Maroubra, Australia, back in 1984, where he was born and raised. His early years were far from easy, marked by challenges and hardships that pushed him towards a life of crime. Even as a young man, he found himself involved in illegal activities, leading to spells behind bars in juvenile prison. Despite the challenges he faced, Mark showed early signs of resilience and determination. However, as he reached his teenage years, he found himself drawn into the allure of the street life, seeking belonging and identity in the camaraderie of local gangs. This led to his involvement in petty crimes and minor offenses, eventually landing him in juvenile detention centers. Around the age of 21, Mark made a fateful decision to join the infamous Australian outlaw motorcycle gang known as the Comancheros. This gang, notorious for its criminal activities, operated within the shadows of Australia's underworld. Drug trafficking was a major part of their illegal activities, and smuggling drugs was particularly profitable. Yet their criminal range of skills or abilities extended beyond narcotics, encompassing extortion, contract killings, money laundering, and daring heists. Seduced by the sense of brotherhood and power that the gang offered, he made the fateful decision to join their ranks, believing it would provide him with the means to escape his humble beginnings and attain wealth and status. For Mark, the allure of the Comancheros lay in the promise of power and recognition. Eager to carve out a prominent place within the gang, he embarked on a persistent pursuit of success and notoriety, willing to do whatever it took to climb the ranks and establish his authority. Mark's introduction to the world of organized crime came during his early adulthood, when he crossed paths with members of the Comancheros. As he got more involved in the criminal world, Mark's ambition grew, driving him to pursue greater influence and authority within the Comancheros. His rise through the ranks was marked by a willingness to engage in ruthless and violent acts, earning him both respect and fear among his peers. Despite his involvement in crime, Mark appeared to be a regular person to those who didn't know about his criminal activities. He hid the true extent of his illegal actions behind a facade of normal life and respectability. In March 2009, the Comancheros faced a significant setback when their leader, Mick Howey, was arrested due to his involvement in a notorious brawl at the airport. This incident, which resulted in the death of a rival Hells Angels member, sent shockwaves through the gang and left an absence of leadership in its wake. With Mick Howey out of the picture, the Comancheros needed a new leader to guide them through this turbulent period. Stepping into the spotlight was Duax Dax Nyakuru, a seasoned member of the gang known for his cunning and ruthlessness. In the absence of Howie, Dax assumed the role of the club's supreme commander, wielding newfound authority and influence over his fellow Comancheros. For Mark Douglas Buttle, this shift in leadership presented both opportunities and challenges. On one hand, the absence of Mick Howie created a potential opening for Mark to rise to a position of greater prominence within the gang. However, Mark's ambitions were put on hold as he grappled with his own set of pressing concerns and priorities. Despite his aspirations for leadership, Mark recognized that the timing was not yet right for him to assert his authority within the ranks of the Comancheros. Instead, 
he focused on navigating the treacherous waters of the criminal underworld, biding his time and waiting for the perfect moment to make his move. He's at the scene and joins me now on the line. Morning, Chloe. What can you tell us? Good morning, Alicia. Well, just after 5.50 this morning, a security guard working for the Chubb security firm was making a, uh, a routine cash drop-off here at the Commonwealth Bank building in Sussex Street when he was approached uh, by a, a man who jumped out of a silver Audi. At the crack of dawn on Monday, June 7, 2010, Gary Alaban embarked on his routine cash delivery route, starting his day just as he had done countless times before. His wife, Monica, received his customary message of love and a thoughtful note before he set off from their Kirawi home. Arriving at the Commonwealth Bank ATM, Gary expected nothing out of the ordinary. Accompanied by his colleague, they unloaded $300,000 to replenish the cash reserves. However, their routine was abruptly shattered when three armed assailants stormed in, brandishing weapons and issuing commands. Gary and his colleague complied with the robbers' demands, following their training to the letter. Despite posing no threat, Gary found himself facing an unimaginable act of violence. Without warning or provocation, one of the assailants callously fired a single shot into Gary's back as he stood defenseless with his hands raised in surrender. The assailants swiftly seized Gary's work-issued firearm before fleeing the scene in a silver Audi S8, leaving Gary critically wounded on the ground. Rushed to the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital, Gary's injuries proved fatal, robbing Monica of her beloved husband of 25 years and shattering their dreams of retirement just eight months away. The news of the senseless shooting sent shockwaves through the community, prompting a visceral reaction from those who knew Gary and respected his dedication to his work. As Monica grappled with the sudden and devastating loss, authorities launched a comprehensive investigation into the brazen robbery and murder. In a cruel twist of fate, the burned-out remains of the Audi were discovered not far from the Comancheros clubhouse, raising suspicions of potential gang involvement in the heinous crime. Determined to bring the perpetrators to justice, authorities issued a substantial reward of $100,000 in the hopes of gathering crucial leads and information to aid in their investigation. We believe we have a clear picture of the events of the day and a fair idea of the identities under the balaclavas, but we need the community's help to bring our case beyond reasonable doubt. Make no mistake, this wasn't a robbery gone wrong. Gary Alaban had complied with their demands and was executed in cold blood, Detective Acting Superintendent Grant Taylor said. As we move forward, let's keep a mental note of the significant events that have unfolded, as they will tie back into the story later on. In the early hours of December 29, 2010, emergency responders rushed to Kugi Bay Road following reports of a raging fire at Kugi Inc., a local tattoo parlor. Flames engulfed the building, forcing the evacuation of nearly 30 neighboring residents. Witnesses recounted the chaos as police urgently evacuated nearby apartments, ensuring the safety of all those affected. Fortunately, firefighters managed to bring the blaze under control, averting any casualties. Nearly 30 neighbors were forced to evacuate their homes after a tattoo parlor owned by the Comanchero motorcycle gang in Sydney's eastern suburbs was targeted in a petrol bomb attack. The incident occurred at 12.50 a.m., causing significant damage to the business known as Kugi Inc. on Kugi Bay Road in Kugi. Fortunately, firefighters managed to extinguish the blaze, and there were no reported injuries. A couple residing next to the tattoo parlor described the chaotic scene, recalling how police entered their apartment around 1 a.m., urging them to evacuate immediately. Mr. Gene Fisher recounted the confusion, stating that they were unaware of the situation until they were directed to leave their home. They waited outside as firefighters worked to contain the fire, eventually returning home around 3 a.m. after their apartment was inspected for any structural damage. Their neighbor, Francine Nesgovitz, expressed gratitude that their unit remained unscathed and commended the swift response of the emergency services. Despite the ordeal, they awaited the restoration of their electricity supply. Another resident living nearby reported hearing the sounds of breaking glass during the attack and initially believed it was caused by revelers from the nearby Kugi Bay Hotel. However, investigations quickly revealed that the fire was no accident. 
Witnesses reported seeing broken glass followed by the hurling of a petrol bomb into the tattoo parlor, suggesting a deliberate attack. The tattoo parlor targeted in the petrol bomb attack is co-owned by the national president of the Comancheros, Duax Nyakuru, along with his right-hand man, Mark Buttle, and another individual. Buttle, who was recently involved in a brawl with Alan Sakis, the head of rival crime gang Notorious, and his associate David Lima, was released on bail. Following a brawl on Bondi's main street at the end of October, all three owners were placed on remand after being charged with public brawl, but they have since been bailed. Superintendent Gavin Dengate of the Eastern Beaches Local Area Command stated that the Tattoo Shops Association with an outlaw motorcycle gang is one of the aspects being investigated. While it is unclear if the attack was motivated by revenge, investigators are exploring potential connections to previous petrol bombings targeting tattoo parlors across Sydney. Dengate mentioned incidents in Annandale in February, Mount Druitt in September, and shots fired into a tattoo parlor in South Windsor in October as part of their inquiries. The building owners, who are not affiliated with any gangs, were reportedly devastated by the bombing. To understand the motive behind this targeted attack, we must delve into the history of the Comancheros and their ongoing feud with rival motorcycle gangs. The notorious motorcycle club emerged as a formidable adversary, with tensions escalating following retaliatory attacks between the two factions. While suspicions pointed towards the notorious motorcycle club as the perpetrators of the Kugi Inc. fire, no individuals were prosecuted in connection with the incident. The mounting pressure from law enforcement, coupled with escalating threats from rival gangs, prompted Duax Dax Nyakuru to flee the country in 2011, leaving a leadership vacuum within the Comancheros. Seizing the opportunity, Mark ascended to the coveted position of Supreme Commander, wielding newfound authority and influence. However, Mark's tenure at the helm of the Comancheros was marred by controversy and instability. An argument at a gentleman's club led to Mark's arrest on charges of affray and assault, tarnishing his reputation and casting doubt on his leadership abilities. Reports of internal discord and violence within the gang further underscored the violent nature of Mark's leadership. As the Comancheros grappled with internal strife and external threats, Mark's leadership faced intense scrutiny, raising questions about the gang's future under his command. In 2013, the Comancheros embarked on a new venture in Sydney's southern region, spearheaded by Mohammed Hijazi, a prominent figure within the gang. With Mark frequently finding himself entangled in legal troubles, Mohammed emerged as a potential successor to the leadership position. However, Mark's violent journey continued into 2014, marked by another brush with the law. On January 6th, he was arrested on the Gold Coast, Queensland, due to an outstanding warrant stemming from the dispute at Spearmint Rhino. Additionally, he faced charges for allegedly threatening a Queensland police officer and his family in 2012. Following his arrest, Mark was sentenced to a minimum of nine months behind bars, with an additional six months of parole. Despite pleas from his lawyer to avoid incarceration, Mark's fate was sealed by the judge. During his court proceedings, Mark expressed his dedication to his young children and spoke of his plans to marry his girlfriend upon his release. However, his aspirations for a fresh start were short-lived. Just five days after completing his parole term, Mark found himself in handcuffs once again in July 2015. Attempting to depart Australia with his girlfriend and daughter aboard a chartered Bel Air BE-20 King aircraft, Mark's plans were prevented when Australian Border Force officers intercepted the flight at Newcastle Airport. Upon searching the aircraft, authorities discovered over $60,000 in undeclared Australian currency concealed in multiple bags. Mark was subsequently charged with money laundering and unlawfully exporting more than $10,000 from Australia without proper declaration. When approached by police, Mark reportedly made a statement. My girlfriend filled out the cards. I only had 10, and she had the rest. Indeed, the developments surrounding Mark's involvement in various criminal activities are quite intriguing. Despite spending two months in jail, Mark's legal entanglement seemed far from over. The unresolved case of Gary Alaban's tragic death during the ATM robbery cast a shadow over Mark, as police identified him as a person of interest after six years of investigation. This newfound scrutiny 
likely prompted Mark to flee the country, leaving behind a trail of uncertainty within the Comancheros. Mark's departure left a significant void within the gang, exacerbating the existing internal discord. With leadership now in question, tensions simmered among Comancheros, leading to a rift between factions loyal to the offshore leader and those favoring a leader closer to home. The ensuing power struggle fueled outbreaks of violence, keeping police and anti-bikey strike force Raptor on high alert. In early 2017, tensions within the Comancheros reached a boiling point when Mark's trusted associate, Ali Bazi, clashed with another high-ranking member, Mezen Chandab. In response to the escalating conflict, Mark sent a text message to all Comanchero members, signaling a pivotal moment in the gang's internal dynamics. I'm the effing commander of the world. No one is to touch another member or set up another chapter without my permission. Ali is in charge until I return. The fallout from Mizan Chandab's departure dealt a significant blow to the Comancheros, as he led 20 members away from the club, further fragmenting the gang. With tensions escalating and the specter of a full-scale gang war looming over Sydney, law enforcement took proactive measures. Police, supported by the Strike Force Raptor Squad, conducted raids on the homes of Comanchero members and associates. This sentence might be clearer if rephrased as, using laws related to firearm prohibition orders, police searched homes without warrants to stop crime and prevent violence. Meanwhile, Mark enjoyed a life of luxury in the sunny and luxurious surroundings of Dubai, where he remained heavily involved in drug smuggling operations. However, by 2020, the drug market in Australia underwent a significant shift, leading to plummeting prices and reduced profits for Mark and his cohorts. In response, Mark initiated the Commission, drawing inspiration from historical figures like Lucky Luciano, with the aim of establishing a mafia-style drug cartel capable of exerting control over drug prices on the streets. The group consisted of several major players in the drugs business in Australia. He sent them all the following text messages. To all main players in AUS and abroad, all who land work in Sydney NSW, as of 2021, there will be a Sydney commission that will be formed. As you have seen in 2020, the price of fry, which is slang for meth, reached 250, and in a matter of one month, it dropped to 80k. This is because there is no structure, no rules, no reasoning, and to be honest, there's no sense. Mark's plan was to implement a tax system for drug imports, ensuring stability and safety in the drug trade. He aimed to create a structured environment where everyone could operate without fear, and prices would remain consistent. Although NSW police noted a rise in drug prices during this period, it wasn't confirmed whether it was due to Mark's taxation scheme. Despite this uncertainty, Mark's business was flourishing, and it seemed like smooth sailing for him. However, trouble always seemed to find its way to Mark Buttle. After enjoying five years of luxury living in Dubai, Mark's time in the city came to an unexpected halt due to an intriguing incident. Exile Sydney bikey boss Mark Buttle has clashed with English tourists in Dubai. Vision posted on Instagram shows the heavily tattooed Comanchero at the back appearing to spit and shout threats as restaurant staff try to separate the groups. New South Wales police are said to be keen to speak to Buttle, uh, but he's been in Dubai since 2016. According to eyewitnesses, an English tourist allegedly slapped Mark's wife Mel on her behind. Understandably, Mark was furious about this incident. However, Dubai is known for its strict legal system, making it a place where you don't want to get into trouble. To avoid potential legal consequences, Mark decided to flee to Turkey and later settled in North Cyprus. North Cyprus, a state recognized only by Turkey, lacks an extradition treaty with Australia, making it an ideal place to seek refuge. It seemed like a safe haven for Mark. However, as fate would have it, trouble found him once again. On July 9, 2022, Mark was arrested on the island of North Cyprus and subsequently sent back to home country for trial in Turkey. A statement from the Northern Cyprus Interior Ministry was released regarding Mark's arrest. A decision to deport Mark Douglas Buttle, who was found to be inconvenient for the peace and security of our people, was taken on Friday. However, Mark and his lawyer had a different perspective. They claimed politicians were squeezing him for money. He had paid bribes to remain there in freedom, but they kept wanting more. 
The past of Mark Buttle's estranged wife has surfaced as the Comanchero bikey boss faces court over a significant international drug bust. Buttle, sent back from Turkey and arrested by the Australian Federal Police upon arrival in Darwin, is accused of coordinating the shipment of over 160 kilograms of cocaine from Hong Kong to Melbourne via Sydney in May 2021 as part of a transnational criminal syndicate. According to court documents, Mark has also been charged with conspiring to import a commercial quantity of a border-controlled drug between March 19 and June 3, 2021. These charges carry a maximum sentence of life in prison, indicating a grim outlook for him. As for the case involving Gary Alibon, it remains uncertain whether Mark will face any consequences for his alleged involvement. Despite the reward for information increasing from $100,000 to $1 million in 2020, no one has been prosecuted for the crime as of 2024. His ex-wife, Melter Wisha, disclosed that they separated over a year ago, and she hadn't seen him in 12 months. Ter Wisha, once a promotional model for Hooters, has since been living in Europe. Photos from her past show her on the red carpet at the premiere of Talladega Nights in Sydney in 2006, posing with celebrities like Chris Hemsworth and Kieran Perkins. Tear. Wisha parted ways with Buttle when he relocated to northern Cyprus, while she moved to Bodrum, Turkey. Despite sharing children, she hasn't seen Buttle for a year, while her children have. Last week, she spent three days in an immigration detention center in Turkey, which was reportedly related to her association with Buttle. Meanwhile, Buttle remarried shortly after moving to northern Cyprus, reportedly to a woman named Azg, who has also been detained in Turkey for separate matters. Buttle faces two charges for allegedly importing cocaine worth a $40 million, with each count carrying a maximum life sentence. The AFP alleges it identified Buttle in mid-2021, leading to his arrest. Mark's attempt to establish a mafia-style drug cartel, known as The Commission, further underscored his audacious ambitions and willingness to defy the law. However, his plans were cut short by his arrest and extradition, leaving behind a trail of uncertainty and chaos within the Comancheros. Meanwhile, the revelation of his estranged wife's detainment shed light on the personal and legal repercussions of his criminal activities. As Mark faces charges for his alleged involvement in a major international drug bust, the future remains uncertain for both him and his associates. In the end, the slap on his wife's behind may have been the catalyst for Mark Buttle's downfall serving as a reminder of the unpredictable and often devastating consequences of a life of crime. As the dust settles on this violent chapter, one can only wonder what lies ahead for the infamous Comanchero bikey boss and those caught in his orbit. Australia's motorcycle club scene has witnessed various groups rise and fall, but few have left as indelible a mark as the Comancheros. Established in the 1960s, the Comancheros have evolved into a formidable force within the Australian bikey community, and their influence has rippled across borders, impacting the global motorcycle club culture. Over the years, the Comancheros have been involved in a myriad of criminal activities, including drug trafficking, extortion, and violent clashes with rival motorcycle clubs, such as the Banditos and the Hells Angels. The club's influence extended beyond the streets, infiltrating various sectors of society. The Comancheros' stronghold in Australia was marked by territorial disputes, turf wars, and a network of criminal enterprises that allowed them to maintain financial stability and control. The outlaw image of the Comancheros, coupled with their propensity for violence, only solidified their dominance in the Australian bikey community. The Comancheros' influence, however, did not stop at Australia's shores. The club began expanding its reach, forming alliances with international outlaw motorcycle gangs and creating a global network that stretched across Europe, Asia, and the Americas. This expansion has allowed the Comancheros to forge connections with like-minded groups, sharing ideologies, criminal enterprises, and resources. The Comancheros' approach to global expansion mirrors the strategies employed by other notorious motorcycle clubs, creating a powerful subculture that transcends national borders. Their influence within the international biker community has contributed to a complex web of alliances, rivalries, and criminal enterprises. Despite their dominance, the Comancheros have faced significant challenges from law enforcement agencies 
determined to dismantle their criminal activities. High-profile arrests, raids, and legal battles have attempted to curb the influence of the club, both within Australia and abroad. These challenges, however, have only served to further solidify the Comanchero's reputation as a resilient and tenacious organization.